A&M State Baseball is coming off a historic 2016 season that saw them record the best win improvement in the country, going from 11 wins in 2015 to 34 wins in 2016. The head coach, Brian Green, is an Aggie alum and has always believed this program he used to play for can be special. We knew that this was a great place and it just needed some certain you know, facility type uh, things to build up. So. Did we know what we had in front of us? Absolutely, and we knew that it was big, but then again, it wasn't gonna be that big. You know, with the community support, I could feel it even in interviewing for the job, um, looking around and, and having the weather, having the players, having the facility coming in from the Johnson family, and just knowing if we could address the surface, take care of the bullpens, and you know, and dress up around the outside of the facility. We were pretty excited about it. Uh, next phase was obviously gonna come in and, and recruit well, so our expectations were really high, and I knew we were gonna work really hard. Um, I felt like I did a great job in hiring tremendous people, which certainly came true. Um, and we knew that we were gonna have an opportunity with the roster turning over in that first year with so many seniors that we'd have a chance to go out and recruit a ton of people. So we went out, uh, we worked extremely hard at recruiting, but. You know, people buy into vision and people buy into optimism. That's a personal belief of mine because that's what I buy into and that's what I believe in. And when we went into those living rooms, we told people exactly what we wanted to do. We meant it, we believed it, and we told the families that if you sign up for us here at New Mexico State, it's going to be our dying passion to make sure that when you do show up, what we say to you today is going to come true. I just remember receiving that first phone call from Coach Mangrum. Uh, just the tone in his presence seemed really family oriented. Um, I didn't really expect that from a coach and then he started talking about a vision that he had for the program and everything that you know he does for pitchers so that really made me buy in and uh, the reason I chose to come here is because when I came on my visit with Coach Green um, he presented a presentation in his office about a vision he had for the program and all the upgrade in the facilities and the way he was saying it, it was so genuine and unique that it was easy to buy in and his whole preach was family and I come from a very really strong family, I'm blessed, so that, that it was very easy to buy in because of that. I think a big selling point coming here was definitely Coach Mangum, Coach Green, um, showing up you know, early on in the recruiting process at Johnson County. Um, they really sold a vision um, and family, which is their kind of the biggest core value we have around here. When I had came on my visit, it was a completely different facility. The facility was not good at all, bottom of the line, and then uh, he showed me a PowerPoint and basically sold me off of a PowerPoint and a vision that they had. And then now being here for over a year, the vision's coming true. There's a lot of things changing and changing rapidly. While a vision was set in place by Coach Green and his staff, the results needed to be there. And it did not take long for the accolades and wins to start rolling in, which has included a back-to-back -back nationally ranked recruiting classes. You know, these kids, this first recruiting class will forever be special to me. And, you know, I'll get emotional thinking about that. These kids bought into a vision. We didn't have anything here. We just, we put things up on the wall. We put things up on the computer screen. And we said, this is what we're going to do. And a nationally ranked class came with that from a bunch of kids who just bought into nothing more than a vision that we put at the primary foundation of it is trust. But they bought in. That will forever be special to me. So now seeing them get better, seeing them be a part of this program, when I have to tell those kids, when we have to tell those kids goodbye, I'm gonna be a mess. So uh, it'll be, I'm looking forward to those tears in a sense. I'll be really proud of those things, but uh, it's gonna be a very difficult day. And I hope as we end our last day here at Presley Ask you that that's not the last time we're playing, that we can move into the WAC tournament, obviously, and then go into even bigger and greater goals. From 11 wins in 2015 to 34 wins in 2016. A turnaround of historic prominence for NM State Baseball. All started by a remarkable job in recruiting and a focus on building team culture. I think anybody would tell you that when you turn it around that fast, that, that is you're arriving a little bit quicker than normal. Uh, you know, but I just look at the makeup of our team. I look at the talent of our coaches, the work ethic of our program. I and mean, we were older. Uh, we had an extremely competitive group. But we kind of wobbled, you know, for the first half of the season, and we really started to gel uh, in the second half of the season when we came conference time, and that came for us to it's tough scheduling, you know, going on the road, playing real teams, going into a Big West opponent on the road, 
the Arizonas, the Arizona States, the UNMs. Uh, but for us, going to Baylor and going to Texas Tech and grabbing wins from Big 12 opponents, it really gave us the confidence to know that we could do this. Uh, and then it started to look like from our players' perspective that, but you know what, a lot of the things that the coaching staff has said, these are actually starting to come true. So last year going in, I just wanted to show, and we wanted to show remarkable improvement for the university, show them that they made the right decision. Um, and that turnaround, as it started to grow, uh, was pretty awesome to be going through it. With success comes expectations. Led by a veteran group that includes 14 seniors, the expectations are high for Aggie baseball in 2016. Because of the senior heavy roster, head coach Brian Green has put together a gauntlet non-conference schedule. It features eight teams that played in the NCAA tournament last season and three teams that appeared in the College World Series. We, we're, I mean, we're pumped about the schedule. I'm really excited about the schedule. What do we want to do and what are our goals as a program? We want to get to the NCAA postseason. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to either win 40 plus games or we're going to have tremendous RPI or we're going to win the tournament. So for us, what's going to give us the best opportunity to achieve all of our goals? Schedule strong. But uh, no, we're excited. I mean, you've got the Pac-12 champion. Uh, you've got Big West team that went to Omaha. Uh, obviously, Texas Tech, Arizona, Arizona State. We'll play the Lobos in a rivalry game. Bryant comes in. Uh, a 47 win team, uh, it and BYU on the road. This is all prior to conference. And then our conference is going to be really good this year. So we feel it gets us in the best position to be prepared for conference. And with an older team, that's when you take your shot. And, and we just felt like, let's do it because we're going to have a bunch of seniors. Oh, I'm pumped. As soon as it came out, I said, wow, here we go again. This is going to be one of the top, hopefully, the top 25 non conference schedule as far as strength. And uh, if we take care of business early, We'll, we'll be able to put our name out there on the map. This, is, this, is, this team's been one of the best teams to ever be around as far as talent-wise. And then in here in the locker room, we're tighter than any team I've ever been on. And something really special is about to happen this year. As opening day gets closer, Green and the Aggies do their best to prepare for what they hope is a banner 2017. And, and now that we're here, we're in year three, uh, we're picked to win the league. I mean, it's on, you know, and now we want to go out and prove to everybody that everything we've said is we can make come true and, and prove to our kids that if you get after it and you're smart and you care about each other and you want to compete at the highest level and you're a good person off the field and you're a good person of family, that you can have success in life. And that's what we want to teach each other and get after each and every day. In 2016, NM State fell one win short of a regular season WAC title, which is one goal they have their eyes set on for this season. I think the great moments, uh, the big moments, uh, we haven't seen them yet here, you know, and, and I told the kids up at the top of the peak, those are the moments that I want to chase. I want to chase the moment when, the, when this thing's over, that I can hug my assistant coaches in a big circle, shed a tear, sprint out, and jump into a dog pile with a team. That's what it's all about, and that's what we're doing here. New Mexico State Aggie Profiles is brought to you by Pepsi, White Sands Federal Credit Union, Memorial Medical, Route 66, and by Wells Fargo. Coming off four straight 30-win seasons, NM State softball has a different look in 2016 with only two seniors, but still loads of talent to chase down another conference title. Our team motto this year is going to be do simple well, and we want to keep it simple so that it, it doesn't get too big on us. We're just going to do what we do and try to keep simple, getting better every day. I think every year you need to construct your offense as if it's a new, you know, like you're starting with clay and you're just making a different mold. And it's just a matter of putting all those pieces together and getting comfortable with each other and, and learning about each other and learning what we can expect. Our whole theme this year is having the same vision as coach and just investing and believing in it. And I think if we do that, then we can go far with this team. We have so much potential, and I feel like we can go very far for New Mexico State. After losing four starting position players to graduation, the high-powered Aggie offense will have a different look in 2017. We definitely got some triple threats. I believe Katie Sesney, Janelle Medina, they can hit you with a soft slab. They can hit it over your head, and our offense will definitely keep other teams on their toes and not know what's coming from us. We're brand new behind the plate. Um, Lexi Minus is back there. She got some time last year, but not a lot. Other spots in the lineup, Katie Sisney, Janelle Medina, 
Destiny Bluford's also making a run. Mario Diaz has also got an awful lot of really nasty stuff, and, and so Mario and Kayla will kind of duel. And then we have three additional ones in Farron Glacken, Brandy Wilkie, and Alexis Devers. So there's there's some people doing some quality things right now that are gonna, those freshmen are gonna break into the lineup and be important for us. The schedule for NM State is as tough as ever, featuring seven programs from a Power Five conference, and five teams that finished top 30 in the country in RPI in 2016. I would probably say that this is the toughest overall preseason that we've had. The second weekend in, we have Tennessee coming in, we have Oregon State, we have a doubleheader against Arizona later in the season. We go to Palm Springs, it's the slated as the top tournament in the country. We've got Michigan there, LSU there. We're going to Arizona State. We play Nebraska there. And, and I feel like the kids are gonna be exceptionally seasoned, but we're up for the challenge. Coming from Hawaii, like I used to watch them and like now I get to like step on the same field as them and like I can compete so I can like just compare myself to them. I mean, it's awesome to have big teams come here, but it also is awesome for us to play them and like kind of put our name out there and show what New Mexico State has to offer. The Aggie offense has been consistently one of the best power hitting teams in the country. And this year, the style shifts to speed, which could pose big time problems for opponents. We've always been known for, for power and, and we kind of went after some speed last year because we felt like you know, we had a lot of power and, and sometimes the scale just tips and I believe it tipped a little more in the speed direction this year. You know, we are used to power but this team is so good at adapting and being versatile and using our speed to give us an advantage this year. This is by far the fastest team and, and we should, we came close to breaking some records last year in the WAC and, and set some program records for stolen bases and I would be very surprised if we don't break those this year. The Aggies are once again led by Kathy Rodolph, who enters her 14th year and is coming off two straight WAC Coach of the Year awards. She just gives us a push. She doesn't like force us in the direction. Like, she's like, okay, this is our direction and she lets us go. Well, it means that I've had some phenomenal young ladies that want to come here and play in our program. And I just was fortunate enough to go pick the kids that would buy into what Kat and I want to have done here. Well, I think Kathy's just an excellent mentor and she keeps everybody on the rails and she keeps every, she keeps everybody um, focused on what's relevant and what matters and she gives the kids a good vision to follow. For New Mexico State Women's Golf, a late Christmas present arrived in January when University of Texas transfer Dominique Galloway decided to transfer away from the Longhorns and join the Aggies, boosting an already great team to a whole new level. I first went to Texas and I was so excited because like it's the University of Texas, like who wouldn't want to go there, right? Um, <clears throat> I just had, like it wasn't really like a good fit for me, like and then I decided, I was like, hey, I think I need to, like, I need to change because, like, this isn't the right place for me and I want to be able to, like, um, get the education that I wanted because there they didn't have what I wanted and here actually did. So that was one of the main factors why I wanted to come here. And um, I just, I knew Kristen, so I was, like, going through a hard time over there at UT. She texted me and she's like, hey, like, when you have time, can you give me a call? I need mean, to talk to you about a few things. And so we were texting back and forth and, she mentioned that she wanted to transfer. So I was actually pretty shocked because she was at Texas, you know, like it's a big, big name school and she's a great golfer. So we just, we talked a lot over the weeks and she just came on a visit and I offered to come down and visit with her over Christmas break and that's pretty much how it happened. And M State seems to have found a big time transfer in former Texas Longhorn Dominique Galloway. Just a freshman, Galloway carries herself like a veteran on the course. She seems to really enjoy the game. She stays really level-headed on the course, doesn't get real high or real low, which is really good. You can't tell if I just made a birdie or a bogey. Um, I think that's like my strong suit. Like My golf game is like, it can be good sometimes, it can be bad sometimes, but I think my mental game is probably like the strongest. She's mentally strong. Um, She's a good ball striker, uh, but she also walks around the golf course uh, like she knows what she's doing 
and uh, she kind of wills the ball into the hole. She is a great golfer and she's confident about her game, so I think it's really going to push all of us to be better and be, uh, we'll be a better team with her. We want to get that for Pete because um, my last three years we've done pretty well and so adding her on the team I think we can really, really make these goals happen and fruition and so I'm excited to see how we do and how she pushes everyone to get better um, because it's a team sport, you know, one person isn't going to make the team and I think with her personality, with her game, it's just going to make us better. When I made the decision to transfer, I, my heart was already set here. Like, I knew 100% that this was the place that I was supposed to be. We have a great group of girls and, and they kind of just took her under their wing and uh, it's been off and running ever since. What we try to do here is create the family environment and that no one's better than anyone else. We're a team and we work together and support one another and I think uh, Dominique learned the hard way that uh, that's probably the best thing to look for when you look for a team. I just want to play a role because the team aspect is really important to me because I didn't really have that in Texas because it was all about golf. But um, I'm just like so like blessed to be on this team so I'm just like full of joy actually being here so my I don't really have like individual like I have individual goals but that's not my priority like my priority is being a part of the team and um, making us the best that we can be. New Mexico State Aggie Profiles is presented by Route 66, Memorial Medical, Wells Fargo, Pepsi, and by White Sands Federal Credit Union. New Mexico State head women's golf coach Jackie Booth has enjoyed her 35 years in coaching, most notably her time as an Aggie. It's been awesome, and it's something that just fell in my lap. Um, all growing up, going through school, I never thought I'd be a, a golf coach. Always loved golf, played it since I was a little girl. It was something my dad and I did together on Sundays. So, Booth credits former head coach Paul Brilliant for helping her jumpstart her career. He asked me to help him out because he was the head pro and couldn't travel. And I uh, just, we went to BYU for the first trip, which was my alma mater and we played on the course that I had played on for BYU and so everything just clicked into place. We shot a 316 and at that time if you could break 320 you were a really good team and they congratulated us at the banquet that night and I thought you know this could be fun. <laughs> Booth recently won the Gladys Palmer Award, one of the most prestigious awards given in women's golf. I think for the last 20 years I've been on some kind of committee and it's been a lot of fun, nothing that I really didn't enjoy or wished I hadn't have done. And so it was, it was fun to serve and it was a great honor to receive that award. Through the years, Jackie Booth has learned to adjust her coaching style. I used to be a lot harder on the girls. Uh, and sometimes it helped and sometimes it didn't. And my theory was they would come back and thank me for being tough but they would never come back and thank me for being easy on them. Um, now I think it's a different uh, generation, and so you kind of have to change your ideas as time goes by on, on what's going to work for the players you have. She's always making the girls laugh, making me laugh, um, but she's also uh, all business on the golf course. Uh, so it's, it's definitely had an impact on on the way I approach the team as well. Definitely my mental game. She focuses a lot on that, and that is a big part of golf that a lot of people don't realize. Um, she really focused on that, and she knew to make this team great and to get us where we wanted to go, we had to focus on that. In her 19 years as a head coach, Booth has had several favorite teams in her time at New Mexico State. Uh, the first team to win a women's conference championship, that was a great team. Um, we had a team that finished fourth at regionals, so that was really fun. For me, I don't feel like I've done my job unless they graduate, because such a small percent will make the tour. I want them to get a degree so that they can move on. And I think one of the things I enjoy the most is when they come in, they're 
silly teenagers and when they leave, they're grown-up adults going out into the world to make a difference.